Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Irene Greenberg. I serve as the Western Sahara uh, Deputy Regional Coordinator, and I am also the Program Manager of the Graduate Student Grant Program. With me this afternoon are Miranda Kirsten. She is the Farmer Rancher uh, Program Manager and also our tech genius. And also um, is with us Jen von Selgen. She is the Fiscal Manager of Western SAR, and she will be the person that will initiate your award if your proposal is selected for funding. So let's start with this webinar. Um, we will address um, we will address a general overview of the grant submission uh, or writing the proposal per se, and the, then the online submission. And then you will have uh, ample opportunities to ask questions, particularly questions pertaining to budget preparation that Jane will be able to help with. So the first thing that you need to know about Western SAR, that we are a portion of a national program this program is divided by regions. There are four regions in the country that are shown in this map. Uh, indeed, we are the blue region, the Western region. Um, and the notion that this program is Congress mandated and is to incentivate research, education, and professional development in sustainable agriculture. But the peculiarity is that it's focused on regional needs. So every region is a little different. We are not exactly the same. We differ in the programs that we offer. We differ different, um, are different in terms of several criteria of what can be done or not, or what can be funded or not. Um, the, key, the key words in this slide is innovation, innovative research and education are, are really valuable for this program. And also this program or your project should uh, address the three legs of sustainable agriculture that are economic profitability, uh, environmental stewardship, and um, rural uh, well-being of rural communities. Because it's uh, pretty much centered around sustainable agriculture and rural or agricultural communities, every single project that you submit to us has to involve producers. In the case of the graduate student grant, uh, it is required at least the involvement of one producer. Uh, when you write your grant, you need to keep in mind the goals of Western SAR. These goals derive from the notion of sustainable agriculture that is dictated by Congress and is specified here. Exactly the same language is in the second page of the call for proposal. The call for proposal is your friend, so please read it thoroughly. Uh, you will find a wealth of information. Among other things, the goals that we expect that you address through your project that are listed here, satisfy human, human food and fiber needs, enhance environmental quality, um, try to use um, uh, or, or projects that will uh, focus on the use of um, on farm resources and sustain economic viability and enhance the quality of producers. The grad student grant for the 2025 uh, grant cycle um, is open, as you probably already know. Uh, it closes on December 4 at noontime, mountain time. Uh, please notice that in the GMS, in the grant management system, which is a system where you will submit the grants. The time is in Eastern, uh, in, is, is noted in Eastern time. So this is why it says 2 p.m. But the closing, the 2 p.m. in the East is noon uh, in, in the West. Proposals will be selected early March and you will be immediately uh, notified either way, if you are funded or not funded. But if you got the award, you can start your project as soon as April 2025. Just an overview, um, this, you can request up to $30,000 for your project. Either for, and every project is up to three years. And uh, for the last three years, the average uh, success rate is 48%. 
Um, as, um, as you probably noticed, uh, the graduate student proposal has six parts. Um, these parts are exactly mimic in the grant management system in the online submission um, platform. Uh, you acknowledge that you read the call for proposal and you um, are a graduate student, then you will be prompt to provide basic information of your proposal. You will be prompt to write a summary. It's about 300 words. Then the narrative, which is the core of the submission, the budget and budget justification, and then supporting documents. That is essentially, that is what this proposal is about. We will particularly focus on the narrative and on the supporting documents. And again, as I mentioned before, Jen is available for you to answer any question regarding budget. The proposal narrative, which is our focus for today, has seven sections are listed here. Please be aware that not every section weights the same towards the final score. The scores are uh, noted in parentheses. Please note that budget and its justification carry 5% of the total score. And obviously, the number of words in each section is proportional to the weight of that section. So research plan and educational plan will be the sections in, in which you will have room to write the most and they weight the most. Let's go and take a peek uh, on every single one of these sections and what it is expected from you to write. So relevance of sustainable agriculture is the first section where it's 15%. Uh, here in this diagram, you see the notion of sustainable agriculture that has three main aspects, environmental, social, and economic, as we mentioned before, and that is, an, an, it is an, as, and as it is uh, reflected in Western SAR goal. Um, essentially, in this section, uh, you will be prompt to ask why uh, what you propose to do is needed and what are the potential benefits um, that your projects will produce in terms of sustainable agriculture, obviously. Here are particularly examples of um, uh, what, what you could address uh, for Please uh, talk about the limitations of, or the current limitations of the system that you uh, want to study. Uh, it's a very good idea to cite evidence, to use reference. Um, you need to cite previous studies, previous reports. And in terms of benefits here, there is a list of examples that you can use. Um, just for you to know, the reviewers get exactly the same questions that you get in this slide and you will be uh, kind of evaluated on how well can you answer these questions. And, and so what you see here is what a reviewer um, a guidelines will contain. Um, just a tip for this section, um, if you could use num uh, numerical estimates, particularly for the potential section, for the potential part of this prompt is absolutely great. Uh, reviewers really like to see numbers if what you propose to do can be quantified. The second part or the, sec the following section in the seven, in seven part narrative is stakeholder needs and support. Here the idea is that you need to explain how what you propose to do will benefit others, not only you or, or your research group. Um, so here we expect that you will um, talk about the it, it needs that were identified many times through need assessment to reports. Um, if you go to, a, for example, a producer conference and you talk to some stakeholders there, um, people said, oh, we're having this problem. And if you can document that, if you can document that what you propose to do uh, has kind of uh, is related to pro to producers' need, that is really good. In this section, we uh, strongly recommend that you include uh, stakeholder support letters, and we will we will address that in the uh, supporting documents uh, part of this talk. So, in a nutshell, the stakeholder needs and support needs to be part of what you write in your proposal. 
project team is the next, um, the third section of your narrative for this grant, for the graduate student grant, you need at least three people, the graduate student that is the applicant, an academic advisor or researcher that usually serve at this, as, as JPI, and this is because this person um, will have fiscal responsibility and most universities and other research institutions wants a person on their staff or on, on their payroll, and at least, as I mentioned before, one producer. The definition of producer, again, is in the call for proposal, and it is presented here. This is the NIFA uh, a, um, definition. Um, they, the second bullet, they are part-time producer with at least $1,000 of documented annual income from farming or ranching activities. Also, um, includes not in-kind income. So if a person produces and, and donate food for $1,000, that would be, um, that would be acceptable. And, and that is, that is part of this definition. Uh, the project team weights 5% of your total score. Please specify the role of each team member. What, 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 task each person will do. And once more, remember that the producer has to be involved in all stages of the project, meaning in implementing the, the this actually designing the research, implementing the research, and also in the outreach component. The research plan essentially has two main prompts or so two main you know, focuses. One is research objectives. Um, remember that an objective is what you intend to achieve, uh, not what you will be doing. That is in the activity part, in the method part. And the objective must be specific, me measurable, and achievable. That is the three, the three first letters of the SMART acronym. Uh, method and materials um, is a very good idea. Uh, reviewers like a lot when you address methods and materials by objective. It's easier to read and to compare. Uh, here, obviously, as you probably already know, we expect you to describe the treatments that you will do, the experimental designs, how you will implement the treatments, what materials to, you will use, project site, uh, data collection methods, and methods of analysis. Uh, try to be as specific as you can without, you know, um, uh, yes, try to be specific as much as you can. For example, some people said, I will use cover crops, and the reviewers ask, but what species of cover crops? Stuff like that. Try to think that the person that treat your proposal doesn't have, is not embedded in your in your in your work as you are doesn't have all the history with the research as you do so try to be as specific as you can it's a very good idea to avoid jargon and define all acronyms uh, reviewers get super upset when they read acronyms that they don't understand um, uh, keep in mind that each reviewer review about 10 proposals so um Let's try to make their life easier. Um, if possible, avoid to have a, to having to have objectives that are uh, interdependent. If you must to have objectives that they are in, interdependent, um, it's a good idea to explain what is your con contingency plan if one objective fails. What will happen with the other ones that was depending on the first one? Um, if you go to this link here uh, in our website, in the section that says documents for applying, you can read a little more about the SMART objectives. Um, there is a little more detail there. The education plan, as we mentioned before, weights 30% as the research plan does, and is pretty much similar to the research section. You have to um, state your education objectives and in terms of materials and methods here, we refer to outreach activities per objectives, what you will be doing, what materials you will be needing, essentially respond to what you will do, how, when, and where. If possible, try to identify the target audience. Um, if you are planning to reach underserved communities, explain which communities and how 
they will be rich. And if possible, try to estimate the number of participants that you wish to reach through your project. It's a very good idea uh, to plan on having multiple educational outcomes, fact sheet, articles, infographic, podcasts, etc. Um, try to use multiple communication styles, face-to-face, -face, through field days and workshop, uh, through social media, to a, a media like this one, uh, webinars and whatnot. And also it's a very good idea to try to go to different places, not only your university. Farmer markets are great, a lot of fun. Uh, try to present uh, your work um, in producing in producer meetings, classroom, youth programs, 4-H, etc. The more the merrier. Outcomes, educational outcomes, um, that um, obviously for your graduate program, I'm sure that you are expected to publish in a peer review journal uh, or extension bulletins. Please continue doing that. That's great. But don't stay there. Uh, for each publications, videos, as I mentioned before, are very welcome. And explain, and the last bullet is really important, explain how the project uh, material will get into the hands of the producers. Remember the first slides that we are a producer center grant program. And the idea is that what you study and what you produce should have a version that will be applicable for agricultural production. And this is exactly what I just said. So think when, when you develop this section, think on this premise. Uh, timeline is another section of your narrative. I believe it's section number six, uh, weights 5% as well. This is an example of a timeline. That example can be fine, um, can be found in the website that is in the in the yellow uh, box. Um, um, I, when I I will uh, go to the online submission, I'll talk a little about tables in the online submission. Uh, reviewers really stop in the timeline and they see the timeline, they analyze your timeline, and they uh, expect that will be logical in terms of uh, sequence, and also that will be doable in the time of your project. So don't be over ambitious, and be clear and be concise. So this is an example of a nut chart, and the template is in the, in the link included here, sorry. Evaluation of producing adoption is the last section. Um, I believe that weights 5%. And I, essentially, you need to explain here how the project outcomes and how which activities will be evaluated. Um, measure if you, you could measure changes in knowledge, awareness, and attitudes uh, or practices. And also another way to um, conduct evaluation is to see uh, participant satisfaction. So one, one aspect is to measure change in different parameters that you define or how satisfied your audience is. Um, if you are trying to measure change, it's a very good idea to use a before and after activity survey or before and after implementation of an activity. Uh, involve producer and community members in survey development. This is particularly true if 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 a, if a, a big part of your research is uh, more survey development, so that's that's super important. Um, if so, if you are developing a survey, describe the variables of your survey, what you are attempting to measure, how, the sample methodology, and obviously the method of analysis. Uh, evaluation results are required in the annual and final reports. And if you don't go to go so in, so in depth in uh, developing a survey for your project, uh, Western SAR has a, an IRB approved institutional review board approved survey that is super uh, succinct, is, is, is not super in depth to be honest, but at least um, uh, speaks to the first to the first bullet measure changes in knowledge, awareness, attitudes, or practices. So at least you can use that but but use but address this section in your in in your submission many many submissions particularly for this program 
uh, lack the evaluation and producer adoption section. It, they they almost don't don't write, and that would be part of your score, to be honest. Um, let's take a super fast peek to the supporting documents, and then you will have opportunities to ask questions for this section. Um, supporting documents. Um, is listed in the call for proposal and also in the online submission platform. Uh, you will find a signature page that is for your Office of Sponsor Programs to sign and your PI to sign. Don't worry about that. There is a, is a CV of all senior personnel is required. Um, letters of producer cooperation, as I mentioned before, the producer that will be in your in your project uh, needs to submit a letter that is signed and dated. Uh, I will talk about this in a second. Uh, you also, also um, you will need letters letters of collaboration. No, sorry, letters of support from um, from the different stakeholders. I also talk in that on the second, and I would like just to stop one one minute here. What is animal welfare insurance statement and institutional review board approval? So, if you are planning, and I don't think that you will need this because you you are affiliated with research universities, but you will need at least at the submission if you are planning to use an uh, do an experiments with animal at the submission stage you need to send us um, some confirmation that you initiated uh, the animal welfare or II cook um, process with your institution. Likewise, for research with human subject, that you initiating the institutional review board approval process and a, an email would be enough. So if you are doing research with humans, you interview them or you have a tasting session or, or any focus group or any other any other method um, before submitting to us, send a letter, send an email to the Office of Sponsor Programs, Office of Research Compliance, saying I am planning to do this kind of research. Uh, please, I want you to be in your radar that I may, sub I may submit an IRB uh, to you. Um, so for submission, that is enough. So you will uh, attach that email exchange. If you get selected for funding, we need the approval of your institutional review board uh, method for a human subject, likewise for, an, for experiments with animal. So an initiation of the approval process for submission is okay if you get uh, selected for funding, you need to complete that process. Um, again, letters of cooperation. So I would like to talk about the difference between what is a letter of cooperation and what is a letter of support, because uh, we have seen some um, confusion on that. So letters of cooperation is when the producer that is involved in your project write a letter that is specific to your project and is specifically indicate how, when, and where they will be involved in the project, how they will cooperate with the project. Uh, they can be, say, I will devote so many acres to this project. I will do this and I will do that, you know, be very specific. <coughs> Letters of support is when people outside your project uh, are excited about your project. So, um, don't use the letters of cooperations in lieu of letters of support. That really doesn't fare very well. Um, so if you involve one producer, but members of a commodity or, 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 or another organization is very excited because you will be doing this and that, include that request a letter and attach that in the submission. So letters should be should show genuine involvement uh, from producers and enthusiasm for your support team, for your support people. Um, reviewers do read the letters. They don't like cookie cutter letters. Um, uh, through this presentation, I mentioned this site, Documents for Applying. Um, if you click Grants, you will see, uh, a, a, you will see this page. 
and you hear in the in the in the uh, green hyperlinks is an explanation of what I mentioned before. Another friend of yours is the project database. This is really super super important. You go to project database, you uh, land in a page like this one, and then you click the second green hyperlink, and you will have um, a summary of all the projects that were um, that were funded since 1988, I believe. And, and this is the page that you will land. Um, you can type their keywords. As you see, you can search by region, by state, but project type, so we have graduate student projects, research and education, pharma rancher, different types uh, by commodities, practice, etc. Um, do we have questions so far? There's a couple. Um, the first is uh, another graduate student in my lab and I are working on a project that has a qualitative piece and a quantitative piece. Would it be possible for us both to apply one grant for the qualitative and one for the quantitative and be funded even though there will likely only be one publication for the study? Okay. Um, great question. The answer is yes, and let me explain a little more why I'm saying yes, and then I will want to give you kind of a caveat on that. So um, your the PI will be the same PI for you and for your and for your colleague fund for the other students. So and that is totally possible. Um, a PI can have multiple submissions uh, only for this program. So for other programs, no. So your professor can have another Western SAR program per, per funding cycle and yet have several graduate student funded projects per funding cycle. So if you are about to submit this year and your friend is about to submit next year, no problem at all. But there is also no problem if both submit this year. So in terms of the number of projects that your advisor can have per funding cycle, this situation is okay. Now let's go and address the quantitative versus qualitative. There are two things that you need to keep uh, in mind. The first one is that either the quantitative and the qualitative um, need to address the three legs of sustainable agriculture. So make sure that the qualitative part uh, address the environmental aspect, the economic aspect, and the social aspect, likewise for the quantitative part. So that will be my first super important caveat. The second one um, is something that you need to talk with your advisor. Usually, um, it's, it's not a requirement that you will publish in, in a peer review article, to be honest. There is no such such requirement, you know. And by the way, people say, I will publish, I will write an article and, and the article is after the life of the project. So it's, it's, it's not required. You don't have to say how many articles you will publish and it will be the same article. This is, again, something that you will talk with, with um, your professor. But in any case, in the quantitative project and in the qualitative project, please make sure to have results that are applicable to agricultural production, all, all what we spoke before. That is what is the focus, not necessarily on the peer review paper. Okay, oh. Thank you. Um, the next is, will the recording be available? And it will be. We'll send out a link. We'll say in a few days after this. Um, are the supporting documents required from upcoming year, are these modified guidelines? I don't think that I understand the question. What do you mean are uh, required for the upcoming year? Uh, the supporting documents, are most of them are required unless you don't, if, if you don't use, uh, if you don't do um, research with human subject or, for, or with animals, obviously those letters are not a requirement. But the CVs, the signature page, the letters uh, from producers, the letters from stakeholder support, 
uh, there is the current and pending also for your PI. Uh, those are required. Okay. Yeah. They, they can always find that list on the CFRE. Yeah, there is, so, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You please uh, refer to the CFRE. Uh, there you will have not only the list, but explanation of what each document is, which is also very worth reading. Um, the next one, it was mentioned that a producer can be considered someone who donates more than $1,000 worth of products annually. Can the economic benefits of the project also be considered more product donations? Um, so the condition on the producer is before the project, right? Mm -hmm. So you will engage a person that produce. Uh, either in goods or in money, get in money, at least $1,000 per year. Um, if your project will, the, one of the outcome of the economic outcome of the, your project is uh, produce food that will be donated, that's great. But that is independent of the condition of the producer. The $1,000 is a qualifier of the producer and that is before the, the project. Thank you. Uh, if your stakeholders are your project team and partners, can they still provide letters of support or do I need external support from different stakeholders? Uh, it's much better the second option. Yes, of course, you can have your team members to write letters uh, on your behalf and your support, but that won't be enough. I think that you will fare well, well enough in other people's um, uh, 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 are you cheating for you? Not not only the people that you will involve. And then because one more. I, and and one, one second, I want to expand on that. And that is because the assumption, and it's very logical assumption, is that the people that are engaged in your team, they will benefit by doing the team, by, by, by doing the project. So um, the idea is to see how how your project will impact people that not directly benefit from being involved in your project. So that is the idea of the supporting letters. Yeah, of course, that the person that uh, will work with you will work with you because they see a benefit on what you are doing. But but the idea is that, that, that your project go, go beyond your team. And that is the main question of that particular. Yeah. Thank you. So the last one is, for now, uh, can a com can a nonprofit community garden serve as a producer? My project will be working with native bees in these spaces, and I have a previous connection with a nonprofit community garden that I think would be a good fit. Yes, yeah, and Jen, um, um, if you think otherwise, yes, the answer is yes. We have precedence of that. Yes, the answer is yes. The short answer is yes. So if there are no more questions on the, on, on the narrative of the proposal, let me go to a very brief overview of the online submission. And that is because lately I have been receiving emails on that. So I thought that may be a good idea to succinctly uh, go fast. If you feel that this is redundant for you, um, write in the chat, we already know this, skip this, and that will be absolutely fine. I won't get offended at all. So let's move on. Online submission platform is project.sar.org. You need uh, to create an account if you are not there, not there already, and this will be your, your doc, your place to submit the proposal, and if you get funded also to send your reports. Um, you when once you uh, get an account, you will um, and you log in. You will see a page like like you see here. Um, please edit your profile. We do use demographic data to demonstrate the impact of SARS. SARS stands for Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education uh, nationwide. And this is important. This is important for the continuity of this national program because it is a Congress, a Congress supported and Congress right like to see really data and demographic and demographic data. So once you create your account, please, please, please uh, edit your profile. 
um, you always can access to this page uh, from the project home uh, and that is indicated in the in that arrow. Obviously, to start, um, well, this is the addition of your profile. To start your grant proposal, you uh, click here, start a new grant proposal. When you do so, you end up in a page like this. Um, be aware that there are here the four, the four regions. You open the Western one and you select uh, the uh, 2025 Western Graduate Student Grant Program, which is here in this box, and then you click on Begin a New Proposal. Please make sure that you select the Western 2025 Graduate Student, not other program. Um, you will land in a play in a page like this. As you see, everything is missing here. Um, so in order to write the title, edit title, the title has a maximum number of characters. I believe that is 160. Then uh, a project description, edit the description. This description is what a search engine uses. If your proposal is funded, will will be in our grant system. And the, the keywords that you wrote when you search it in projects are the, will be the words that you include in the project description. I believe that has, no, I believe no, it does. It has a maximum number of characters is 300 characters of the for the project description. As you see, another thing important, let me see if I, no, I didn't. Let me go back. Um, another important thing here is that you see the sections, the summary, the summary is what we give to the reviewers, is 300 words, so please, uh, and in the summary, there is a guide, a guidelines of what to write, by the way. Uh, I have read the call for proposal, uh, and I am a graduate student, that is the gate to access to writing the proposal. You need to answer all the questions there, basic information, as I mentioned before, when you will start, uh, where, it's very, it's very straightforward, to be honest. And the narrative is what we addressed before, budget and budget certification, and then the supporting documents. As, as you see, all these sections have a, a red asterisk because they are absolutely incomplete. When all, when the asterisk goes away, you will have the submit proposals. A, um, let me see if I have, yeah, that is, okay. The submit proposals a, boxes will be green and you will be able to submit. Okay, let's go to the proposal narrative. Uh, those are the sections that we talk. The first one is relevance to sustainable agriculture. Uh, this is, I, I hear, um, make it bigger, so for you to see. And you will start um, completing each section by clicking on edit answer. Um, and here again, this is a short version of what I presented here, and it's a short version of the prompt of the call for proposal. The call for proposal is more detailed. So again, read the call for proposal. Not, not rely, not only rely on what is in the, in the, in the, in the grant management system. Um, once, so when you press edit, you will, you will see something like this, like a field like that. This one is to expand the key, um, the, the functions of the editor. Um, so when you click that, you, you will find something like this, uh, pretty much like a word editor. Um, and obviously you can, you can do that. It's a very good idea to use the editor of the GMS, of the grant management system. And that is because, um, the, the, the text will be readable in any mobile device, in a tablet, in a, in a phone, in a computer. Not every reviewer will read your proposal from a computer. So many of them use tablets, particularly the producers that they are, you know, working in the field and they are moved from one place to the other. So, um, it's a good idea to try to use the editor. If you find using this editor extremely difficult, you do a copy and paste but make sure that when you paste the text read nice so you need you might need to edit once what the text that is pasted in this section um okay 
Uh, the next uh, here, by the way, you have the number of words uh, uh, that are al allowable, uh, 1,000 words for this section. Um, I would like to spend some time in ad media. Ad media refers to inserting um, inserting photos and attachments. So let's do that. Ad media. You click here, uh, and you end up in a in a in a screen that will ask you to upload the file. That could be, for example, the budget uh, spreadsheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet, and you upload first the file, and then you go to the media library and you add media. So here is an example um, that uh, for this I would like to add this picture that is already in my media library because I, I uploaded before. And when I do that, uh, here I have the ability to write captions. The caption impact the word count, so be savvy of that. So if uh, for relevance to sustainable agriculture, we you had 1,000 words and you write the caption, that will be counted against those 1,000 words. Um, just just a, a a comment you need you need to fill the alternative text fill here i put plow until you don't have that the insert into the post won't be activated um so that is that is something internal of the system you don't have to write the caption you don't have to write the description uh but the alternative text must need um must be completing that 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 field. Uh, when you do that, um, and then you click insert post, this is how it will look like in your in your submission, in your narrative. That is the picture. And what I did, I click on the picture and this prompt the editor of the photograph of the picture. I can center uh, in different ways. And if I click the pencil, I can edit the picture even more. So it's, it's a very rich editor in that regard. Add tables. You might want to use a table uh, for, for example, the timeline. This is super important. Really try to use the table feature. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. The table feature is this one. Is this one. I forgot to to put a square. So try to use the table feature. This is super important. The, the size of the columns and also of the rows will adjust to the text you enter. Uh, the, this one, um, this, this is the editor of the table. When you, st when you complete your table, this, this will come out and you, you see you can delete rows, add rows, etc. the usual thing. And one another one another mention is that the words in the table count against the word count. So here I have uh, five words, year one, two, here supposed to be year three, and then research and education, and I have five words, and this is how what is really uh, shown here. Tables are important uh, to be inserted using the this this feature, the table editor. Of, of this system. Supporting documents, uh, as we talk, um, it is, a, we, we are ready to do that. Um, and let's, let's do that. And the signature page is a form that you can load it. You will complete the form. You upload, you upload uh, here, upload file, uh, the usual thing. And then uh, in order to do that, well, first you need to do the edit and you need to do this. And when you upload and you attach, uh, complete it, the submission and this, the submit proposal uh, feature is active and um, I am be able to submit. When I press submit from either one, I look something like this, like this part. Uh, and then I will say, if you are satisfied with your proposal, you might need to submit now. Nothing, um, nothing out of this world here. 
Uh, this is a nice feature, tells you when the proposal will call. You can unsubmit if you wish, but make sure that you unsubmit, resubmit again, because the system doesn't remember you. So you can submit and unsubmit if you are not uh, satisfied. Obviously, the resubmission should be before the closing of the call for proposal. Okay, if you need assistance uh, and a little probably more in depth that what I mentioned, please go to help. And here you have the list of things that you can request help for. I forgot to me uh, mention uh, that the, the type of document, either PDF or Excel, is specified in the online submission platform. Uh, letters, um, documents are usually in PDF with the exception of the budget Excel sheets that those are in Excel. But that is, a, you, you cannot upload a Word document, for example. That, that won't work. Okay, resources. Um, those are websites that, again, are your friends, uh, the database, the documents for applying, and the first one is our website. Uh, this is my phone number. And if you have a pro a, another later question about this program, please email to this uh, email or give me a call. I love that. Um, Jen's uh, inf contact information is also here and always uh, you will get an answer from one of us uh, through the Western SAR email. And um, I, I will stop here. Um, this is a very good YouTube channel where Jen explains budget requirements and tips for graduate students. So go there. Uh, and again, this... Um, this um, presentation will be available to you. Thank you to Miranda and, and uh, watch this. This is, this is a great resource for you while you are writing the budget. So with that, we finish. I want to um, let Jen to answer any budget question uh, before the top of the hour. And um, yes, we are here for you. Thank you. Um, so we'll say, the first question is asking if we can share the link of the YouTube video and we can in include that in the email with the recording for this video. Yes. That's that's great. Yes, thank you. Um, okay. Typically, with USDA grants, when routing through a university, the university's Office of Sponsored Projects submits the application. Is this grant application different in that the graduate student completes the submission or does it depend on the protocol of the university? That's depend on the protocol of the university. For example, here at Montana State, anyone, not only grad students that write a, a proposal needs to send the proposal to the Office of Sponsored Programs a few days before the submission for them to review. Usually, uh, most of the time they review the budget and that the IDCs the indirect costs are well calculated. That is the main objective, but that will depend on your institution. We don't require one way or the other. We don't have control on that. And Jen, do you have something to add to that response? Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered it. Yeah, but you, I mean, you, you apply obviously through our grant management system and that's probably going to be you or your advisor submitting it. Yeah. And another thing, the signature, um, the signature page, which is the first required supporting document, really is about that, is, is showing that your Office of Sponsored Programs is aware of your submission. That is exactly what it is. And you will have, you will, you will need the, the signature of the, the fiscal person of your institution there and the name and the, also the contact. It, it asks the name. I think that the GMS asks for the name and the email of that person. Yeah. Do we have more questions? That's the last one for now. I, I am going to try to put the link for the budget video in chat, but we'll also add it to the... Okay, okay. So um, just in a nutshell, please um, be on the lookout for our email 
sending you the link of the of the recording uh, along with the link that uh, Miranda the link for the budget tips that is on our website. Uh, visit our website, read the call for proposal. Those are your friends uh, and really are very useful information. Uh, don't be shy, email us, call us. Uh, we really want you to be successful in your submission. We do have a question for Jen. I see you're, you're typing an answer right now. But Jen, just to clarify, IDC is capped at 10%. Uh, I we I think that you are muted or something, Jen. <laughs> You're right. Sorry, I thought I I didn't press the button hard enough. Apparently, yes, it's <laughs> IDCs are capped at ten percent of your total direct costs. Um, that's the limitation that USDA NIFA puts on this program. So that's what trickles down to everybody else that applies to these grant programs. Well, if there are no more questions, um, thank you for your participation. Uh, thank you for your interest. And I really wish you the best uh, of luck.